We've got Eldar Kamatov joining us to talk about multi-party computation and crypto wallets. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, so yeah, my name is Eldar, I'm from Moscow. Uh, to say the truth, it's my first public speech in English. <laughs> so I'm sorry if, um, um, for my pronunciation maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, today I'm uh, gonna to talk about uh, MPC wallets um, and in particular uh, Spadium wallet um, uh, and uh, tell you how it allows us to eliminate uh, a hassle of private keys and bring script to the wider audience. So let me share my screen. Uh, so uh, any journey to the world of cryptocurrency starts uh, with the study what is uh, the private and public key. Uh, the use of uh, the private key uh, as the only authentication factor to access an address uh, on blockchain is uh, one of the basic and oldest uh, concept on uh, blockchain space. Uh, in fact, it was a simple and uh, elegant solution at the moment of the Bitcoin's white paper release, but now uh, 11 years, uh, 11 uh, years old, um, it um, not obvious meet new challenges. So uh, what are the issues uh, of the private keys uh, centric approach for today? Uh, first of all, it's uh, obvious that uh, the private key uh, as the only authentication factor to blockchain address is a strict barrier for wider adoption. Uh, obviously, it falls from our usual Web2 experience. So you need to create complex backups. It's uh, impossible to remember and so on. Uh, the second issue uh, is uh, that uh, the private key centric approach uh, is uh, the source of um, um, the majority of vulnerabilities in crypto security. Uh, one of the major principles uh, of uh, secure system architecture is uh, not to create single point of failure. Uh, and the private key violates uh, this principle. It uh, really doesn't matter. Do you, uh, using you um, uh, hardware wallets, uh, secure enclaves, uh, HSMs, or maybe even cold storage in uh, underground bunker, um, all uh, these systems architecture is the same. It's uh, just like a different strategy of murder. Uh, you can have um, high walls, a huge army, but when uh, one little hobbit uh, with uh, one single uh, vulnerability uh, executed, uh, being it uh, one ring or private key, uh, all the system meets failure. Uh, and uh, the third point is uh, that um, uh, currently now so the private key approach is uh, one of the major sources of centralization uh, in the space. Uh, why it's so? Because um, when you operate with the private key, you got 100% uh, control. Uh, but at the same time, 100% uh, responsibility. And uh, in fact, um, the typical user is not ready to take uh, such responsibility. Um, it's mo even more true if we speak about business users. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, we see that uh, a lot of uh, crypto is stored on uh, exchanges, custodians, uh, banks, uh, and other centralized service, uh, services. Uh, so, uh, the fact is that uh, nowadays uh, the approach uh, based on uh, a private key as the only authentication factor um, uh, is not adapted for real world use. Uh, do we have any alternatives how to manage crypto without the private keys, uh, except uh, sending all your money to third party custody? Uh, yes, uh, the first traditional uh, and uh, most well known is, of course, uh, multi signature wallets. Uh, but in fact, it's uh, mainly used by business users. Uh, indeed, do you have, uh, do you know a lot of your friends who use uh, multi signature wallets uh, for their uh, everyday purposes? Uh, the second option, uh, which is uh, the development of the previous one, is smart contract wallets like Argent, uh, Gnosis, and so on. Uh, which becomes more and more popular, uh, but have some limitations. Uh, for example, they are tied to uh, one specific blockchain, I mean Ethereum. And the third option uh, that I'm going to tell you today uh, is uh, SMPC wallets. So, 
Uh, what is um, SNPC in terms of uh, crypto wallets and in general? Uh, in general, SNPC or secure multi-party computation is a subfield of cryptography uh, with the goal of creating methods for parties to jointly compute a function over uh, their inputs while keeping those inputs private. Uh, together with uh, homomorphic encryption, this allows us to generate signatures in a distributed way. Um, uh, and th those uh, distributed signatures, uh, in fact, is uh, one of the simplest uh, SNPC applications, also known as uh, threshold signatures. Uh, how it works? Instead of uh, a single private key, uh, we generate a number of independent secrets that are uh, generated, stored, and processed uh, in a completely independent way, never meet uh, each other. Uh, maybe it can be distributed through different devices or parties. Uh, and uh, let's assume that we have some transaction that we need to sign. Um, SMPC allows us to generate partial signatures with every secret, sequentially transferring partially signed transaction data between devices. Uh, on the output, we can get the transaction, which is uh, signed with a private key. This is uh, effectively a multiplication of all these secrets. Uh, however, in fact, this uh, private key uh, was never generated. Uh, that's why it's secure, because uh, you can steal uh, something that even uh, doesn't exist. Uh, what else are uh, the applications of this approach? Um, there can be plenty of possible configurations uh, based on different uh, scenarios, uh, how you distribute your secrets, uh, diff different secrets combination. Uh, but in general, there are three major groups of solutions. Uh, firstly, you can distribute your secrets uh, through a number of your own devices. Uh, and in this case, you got a decentralized wallet uh, with no single point of failure. Uh, to assess, assess this wallet, well, factor have to compromise all of your devices. A uh, more interesting uh, situation is uh, where you distribute secrets through multiple sites or multiple roads in a company. It allows you to share responsibility and implement uh, advanced uh, authentication policies. I will come back to this uh, quite later. Uh, so from the side point, um, it seems that SMPC looks very similar to um, some other well-known techniques, uh, like uh, Shamir secret sharing or on-chain uh, multi-signatures. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, if we speak about Shamir secret sharing, um, it allows us to um, uh, divide uh, a secret, for example, the private key, into the several parts and save it in different places. But uh, when you want to sign a transaction, you need to unite all these parts in a single place. And uh, so you're creating a single point of failure. Um, in opposite to this, uh, when you sign transaction with uh, SMPC protocol, uh, your secrets never meet uh, each other. Uh, and um, comparing SMPC and on-chain multi-signature, uh, in fact, uh, from the business logic point of view, it's the same sheet, uh, but based on uh, the different technologies. Uh, on-chain multi-signature works on the layer of blockchain and uh, SMPC works uh, on the cryptography layer. Uh, what are the benefits of the second option? Uh, firstly, uh, you sign transactions off-chain, so it's uh, obviously faster and cheaper. Um, the second point is that um, when you operate with uh, SMPC, you operate with uh, regular blockchain addresses, not the smart contracts. Uh, so uh, you, uh, you have more privacy because no one see um, how your signature works, who participates in it, how many parties. And uh, this last point, but not least, uh, is uh, that uh, since you have uh, uh, regular address, uh, you have instant support uh, from any DApp or smart contracts uh, without specific integration. Uh, okay. Uh... MPC wallets and custody space uh, is rapidly growing during the last years, um, but the most companies uh, like Unbound, Curve, uh, Sapir, and many others are concentrated on the wallets for institutional clients because it's simply much more profitable. Uh, but there are at least two solutions for personal use, uh, and uh, one of these solutions is Palium Wallet. Uh, let me take you uh, a few minutes to tell a few words about it. 
so uh, with Spartan Wallet, you have uh, two options. The first is uh, to uh, distribute secrets through uh, several your own devices. Uh, for example, you can use your laptop and smartphone or your smartphone and uh, smartwatch. Uh, each uh, device uh, um, keeps one uh, secret that is uh, generated and uh, stores uh, in local way. Uh, in this case, you've got a personal wallet with a distributed security. To access your fund, uh, mail factor have to compromise both of your devices in the same moment. Uh, which is quadratically less likely than uh, compromising a single device. Um, furthermore, your device uh, can uh, communicate offline via Bluetooth or NFC. Uh, so uh, you can take your old uh, smartphone um, without internet connection and create uh, your own cold wallet for free. Uh, another benefit is that uh, in this scenario, uh, you can assess a single account from uh, multiple devices without duplication case and uh, sacrificing their security. Uh, the second option, uh, which is uh, more interesting uh, in my opinion, uh, the second option available in, in Sparium wallet is uh, something that we call security as service. Uh, in this case, uh, one secret is stored by uh, on your device uh, and is known uniquely by you. Uh, protecting you from um, someone who wants uh, who wants to uh, use your funds without your approval. So no one control uh, the funds except you. Uh, and the secret secret is um, processed by a professional third party. Uh, it could be custodian, exchange, or bank, uh, uh, which uh, who has um, some professional level infrastructure, policies, uh, and uh, provides you with operational security uh, for your transactions. Uh, or if you want, you can even deploy uh, this security server in your own cloud. Uh, so, and this hybrid scheme uh, that is neither custodial or non-custodial storage, you are safe because to steal your fund, uh, one have to simult uh, simultaneously hack both uh, your device and security provider or server, uh, which is uh, highly unlikely. Uh, that's how you can get institutional level security for a retail wallet. Uh, this approach have uh, several more advantages. Uh, the most important one is uh, that you can set up an advanced uh, authorization policy uh, for transaction uh, authorization by security server. Uh, it can include uh, everything that you are familiar with uh, on centralized services, like uh, whitelists, um, limits, uh, conditions, uh, second factor authentication, uh, and so on. Uh, you can freeze your wallet uh, in emergency case. Um, and the second feature is uh, that uh, if your security provider is an exchange, um, and this exchange supports this feature. Um, you can make instant deposits and if instant trades uh, on this exchange uh, directly from the wallet because uh, since um, uh, exchange participate in the signature, uh, it uh, can prevent any double spending from your side and uh, it doesn't uh, need to wait um, on chain confirmations uh, to make sure that uh, you send transaction to exchange. Uh, so, uh, speaking about Spartan Wallet itself, um, uh, it's a modern wallet uh, that have uh, everything that uh, should be in a wallet. Uh, it supports a lot of coins. Uh, uh, it has, as I said, conditional authorization, uh, which is a unique feature um, uh, of this solution. Uh, it is compatible with any Ethereum DeFi the app service. Uh, last week we finished the integration with uh, one inch uh, DEX aggregator, so we have uh, the best prices for from uh, all uh, Ethereum liquidity pools. Uh, and the last but not least feature is uh, anonymous biometric backup, uh, but it's topic for a separate uh, discussion. Uh, so uh, please uh, try our bet available for mobile devices uh, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Awesome. 
I don't have any questions. <laughs> Somebody else? That was all very, very super clear. Um, an excellent presentation. Huh? Doesn't, doesn't raise any questions for me. <laughs> uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, be healthy. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.